Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that intro, Rob, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, come in this afternoon uh, to talk with the group. So um, this is kind of the uh, kind of the headline here, the first start. Um, I think it's I think it's really helpful if I just kind of take a a slight not detour, just a sidestep, and give everyone a, a, some context around this. My first experience with this thing we now know as networking goes back to 2009. Uh, I was in a pretty big role in industry, the banking industry. Uh, and I hadn't seen my manager in a little while. And we went in one morning, went in one morning. And uh, she said, you know, can I see you for a second? I said, sure. So instead of walking into our offices, we walk into the conference room. And sure enough, there's somebody from HR. And I knew like that, that was my, uh, that was my invitation to leave. And uh, from that moment on, and the day was April 1st of 2009, no April Fools, was cut loose from a, like I said, a pretty high level job without a severance. By the time I hit, we were on the 22nd floor of the building. By the time the elevator hit the ground floor, I had let my anger go. I was angry, very angry. That was my start. That was the genesis of what, as, um, as Rob so kindly uh, phrased, has been um, a passion here from this side. So where this is, it, where, where I'm coming from here now is kind of taking some steps from those, from those experiences and then leveraging it into what we're doing here. So uh, we have our networking North Stars. Um, as I said, uh, this is something that is a culmination of a number of different experiences. Um, we've heard a lot of terminology, a lot of words here. This is all going to be spoken of and spoken about in the context of networking. So let me start out with a serious question. Do you have friends? It's a serious question. So let me ask you all a question. How? Did the relationship start? Question one. This is an occupational hazard because I teach. Question one. How, how, did the, how did the relationship start? I'd like you to write this down. I'd like you to write three friends. List three friends. You write them, piece of paper, however you capture. Write down three friends, please. Now, I'd like you to look at them. And what is a common theme? It's a common theme. Uh, we have the chat box open. Certainly, you feel free to raise your hand or just call out. Curious, what's a common theme? I work with them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who is who? Who is that speaking? Oh, this is Bill. Uh, I work Bill? with two of them. Yes. Okay. So you work with them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I see a couple of uh, messages here in the chat box. Let me get to there. Shared experiences. Thank you, Zoe. Went to school together. John, similar interest. Okay. And last year we were introduced by someone, someone there, and you got a couple more new messages. And <laughs> shared trauma. Uh, thank you, Chase. Uh, okay. I relate a slightly traumatic event, not that large. So we're, you know, we're good there. And uh, all meetings are unplanned, we're unplanned, and you have something in common. So thank you, thank you. So, and just looking at all of these commonalities, right, and all these, you know, these themes, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm seeing here is, it all started with a conversation, right? It all started with a conversation. You were, you know, same class, same meeting, same company, same organization, whatever this is. Okay, so this among the common themes that we that we've seen and we're going to continue to see is, you know, the fact that these all these friendships, all these relationships started with a conversation, and that is very very true as we continue down our as we continue down the road here. So I love the quote by Maya Angelou, and I just. It has a great context for uh, con uh, context for networking. And the first I'd like to do is let's talk about know, like, and trust. 
So when we're talking about networking, um, we've heard and we know, we have a really good sense. Many of the people in this group uh, know this, know this to be true, we practice it. Networking is still the most effective proven method and approach for landing employment, expanding and developing relationships, and sometimes just getting along, right? Just having that sense of um, what that looks like. So when someone, when we're talking about the no element, first element here is, and let me be clear, this is, what I'm about to say here is not limited to any one particular type, personality type, style, or substance. What I'm suggesting here is the reality of being vulnerable having a sense of vulnerability, a sense of humility, of being in a place where you don't know anyone, you're new to an organization, you're new to any number of different environments. It's the consideration here is how willing, question I ask, how willing are you to be uncomfortable? I coach clients, and quite often, that's among the biggest concerns, the biggest fears, or anxiety, and anxiety is a fear. So from having that side of um, a personality, it's not limited. Let me be clear. It's not limited to the introverts of the world. Okay? Introverts, extroverts, and anything in between, there's always going to be some element of uncomfortable right? Unknown. Um, as humans, we don't like what we don't understand. And that transcends into any number of things, okay? So having that sense, that personal sense of being uncomfortable and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable is going to be real, is going to be real important so that you have the opportunity for people, organizations to get to know you. Again, you have a certain foundation that we've spoke, spoken about, a shared interest, a shared place. You're in the coffee line at, uh, at a meeting, okay? Whatever this is, you have a certain opportunity, a number of very clear opportunities to really engage. And what's really important as an element, of, and a real important element in this stage is to really be focused, to really, really be present. We have no shortage of a number of things in our world. And on that list are phone, email, social media. And we're just surrounded, right? If you just sit, go to go almost anywhere, you're, you've got a number of different things that are happening, okay? It's really critical to be focused as you're learning, as you're asking, as you're talking to folks and gaining information so that, and just be open, being open to the exchange of information. And when I talk about being open, right, as we're really, really focusing on this, um, how can that happen? How does that happen from your experience? How does that happen? You ask questions. Uh, I'm sorry. Who? Um, you ask I, questions, John. I'm sorry. I, I didn't see. You, I didn't see the name at first. Thank you, John. Okay. You ask questions. Okay. And from there, what's what what if, what's been your experience in, you know, the next step? Is there a next step? You see if if there's a commonality, if the person responds, um, and then. You know, that is there is there a place to go with that? But you have to be a little vulnerable yourself. You have to be willing to share. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Okay. Um, any other thoughts? Any other thoughts about, about the exchange information, the exchange process? Rob is here. Go ahead, please. 
Yeah, just uh, John just said it, and you had said it earlier, Mike, the word vulnerable has come up. And I think what I know what I struggle with in my own experience has been when something happens to you, you think it, you're the only person in the world who's experienced that. You're the only one who's ever lost a job. You, you're almost embarrassed to go out and say to somebody, hey, I'm in transition. And so this idea of sharing and being vulnerable I think is a huge impediment to the networking and your comments about this. No, I guess part of what I'm taking away is know that you're, it's going to sound terribly cliche, -ish, but know that you're not the only one experiencing things and the willingness to be open and to, to be vulnerable. I think when you get past that, seems like when you get past that barrier is when you actually have someone say, Oh yeah, I, I that happened to me. And here's what I did. So that vulnerability piece is I think a huge part of the challenge. And isn't it interesting how often when when you finally do admit to something, suddenly you hear about so many other people who've had the same experience where you where you thought you were alone. Yeah. Well said, John. Amen. Amen. Um, I remember just from my experience back in 2009, I mean, it was back long enough where if you shared with well, how about just starting coming and bringing my box home, you know, at 1030 in the morning? And my wife's like, uh, why are you home so early? Uh, yeah, you talk about uncomfortable. Heck, yeah. And from that experience, leveraging from that experience, among the things that I truly took away to Rob and to John's points, thank you. As I made my wended my way through this journey among the things that i discovered and i believe many people in this in this meeting have discovered or know is if it hasn't you know when you're talking to someone if it hasn't happened to that individual i'm not a gambler i'm not it's one bad habit my wife of 36 years will tell you i don't have i don't gamble but i'm almost, almost willing to put some coin down on this the person that you're talking to if they haven't experienced a downsize or a layoff, they know someone that has. That's safe money. Okay. But what I'm also saying is, as it relates to the labor economics that we find ourselves over the last you know, 15, 20, 30 years, if it hasn't happened to someone, I say, you, first of all, you're not missing a darn thing initially, number one. Number two, I say, you're in a statistical minority. They still exist. The 30 year employees still exist, right? Same organization and so forth. Um, so do eight track tapes. So my point is to have that, you know, coming from that space where, again, the job was taken from you. I, when I work with my clients, I insist on that language. You didn't lose the job. The job was taken from you. That has just an unnatural feel to it, which we know. But the opportunity, that opportunity, the scenario, the situation you find yourself in of being totally vulnerable, again, coming home with a box that I so went into a job that I had at 8.30 that morning, okay? It's just, it's just very unnatural. And as a result, you're having that, that, that true sense of vulnerability and being in that space at that time is something that I, uh, well, I haven't forgotten, and it's something that I'm in the right time in the right context. I'm always, always willing to share that. So, but thank you for, um, thank you for those comments. So, let's go into, um, let's go into the like element here. Talk a bit, little bit about this. Um, you know, when you're having conversations, right? We we've all you know, had those. You know, initially, you know, you continue the conversations. And you're leveraging on shared interests, shared companies, all the all the commonalities that we know that we know about. Um, it really does a world of good cementing the relationship, continuing to cement the relationship in some very um, in some very mutual ways. And among the outcomes that I've seen and I continue to see is it you start developing a really good reputation. Reputation in many industries. I'm, I'm willing to say, not that, I'm willing to say most industries, reputation is key. It's really a, 
it's really a key success factor. So when we talk about burnishing and, 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 and really developing um, reputation, um, certain number of activities you know, come to mind you know, to demonstrate, to work here. Um, what I've seen is uh, really volunteering at starting with local networking groups. There's lots of different opportunities to do that. Case in point, you know, the organization that I'm speaking with this, uh, this afternoon and other organizations I'm part of, um, what, has been, what has been your experience from this? I'd like to ask the group, what's been your experience in that arena? As you're working through organizations, volunteer organizations, um, getting out and developing reputation. Sorry, what I, so what did, what are you ahead. asking exactly? You're asking them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ken. Um, and you cut out there for a second. I just want clarification of the question. That's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So when we're when we're looking at you know working with um, developing a reputation, okay, what have you seen work for you? Hmm. Uh, I I think. Um, um, following through, <laughs> yeah. Tell, people, me, when, tell when me more, you, Ken, please. When you ask, when you promise something or say you'll do something, and then you follow through, that builds trust. It builds um, uh, just a good, good feeling between the two of you, and it usually can build from there into something even better. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, what I what I've also seen by really focusing on this on this element is um, the people that you speak to, people that you, that you continue to develop these relationships with, um, they can really become advocates for you, become advocates for you. And they form, they form a, a, a real virtual team that, that speak on your behalf. These are the people or they're part of organizations that they will speak on your behalf when you're not in the room. Okay, to have that element, someone there in the room, and so that efforting towards becoming top of mind. So the whole like element here has a number of different components to it, starting with conversation, developing, burnishing those relationships. And as Ken said correctly, things like following through, say what you mean, mean what you say, yeah, but deliver and come back to what you promise. Those are things that continue to um, continue to burnish, burnish that that reputation. The last here is trust, our first three. And the way I see it, folks, um, networking is faith. Networking is faith. Um, and in the context, it's we're those of us in our network, right? They, tr they come to trust us and vice versa. So there's an element, there's a reciprocity to all of this. And they will do for you on behalf, on your behalf, without fail and vice versa. So having that element of trust, it really is, in a lot of ways, is the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal here. It's, it's an intangible, right? It's an intangible. It's one of those things in our world. We know it when we see it. We know it when we experience it so much so that um, when we spoke about just a moment ago about prior behaviors, pr about really delivering what you promise, it really puts those behaviors, it helps people form an opinion so much so that it takes the trust, it makes it real, and it makes it deeper. Um, the other element of this, um, of this component is... Um, Quite often, it doesn't happen overnight. It's something through repeat, through repetitive actions, you know, different time, different time elements. It's situational quite often. Uh, you think about those relationships. Go back to that list of three folks that you've got on the list. There could be some folks on that list. I know someone on my list. I've known this individual over 40 years. So is the trust intact? Of course. But... I think harking back to over 40 years ago when we first met, having that build upon those elements of behaviors. And you think about 
what are some, I guess, validations of trust? What are some validations of trust in your, in your experiences? What I, I you find one, one is that the person shows a genuine interest, that it's not like a transactional relationship. What can you do for me? But they, they really are interested in what you have to say and, and providing advice um, as opposed to just, hey, let me tell you what I have to offer. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Other thoughts? Other thoughts? I think when you're open and show a level of vulnerability that, um, you know, showing you trust the other person usually also then will lead to trust back to you. Okay. There's a couple of comments in chat. Paul says that being proactive to offer assistance, you know, volunteering actions and then following through. So the idea of sort of following up on your commitments, following through. Dawn offered introducing you to others and highlighting your positive attributes or some other uh, ways of demonstrating trust. Thank you. Thank you, um, Paul. And thank you. Um, thank you, Dawn. Uh, Dawn, I'd like, to, I'd like to circle back with you just for one second. We're talking about introducing others and your, and, and your attributes. Um, from your experience, I'm very curious from your experience, what has been, what has made, what has made that, what you just described, easy? Love the comment, Dawn. For me to, for someone introducing me or for me to introduce someone else? Either way. Well, well, for, for me personally, right, somebody I trust, um, whether it's it's a personal or a professional relationship, um, I'm I'm not going to introduce them for whatever reason, um, unless I've had those positive interactions with the individual and can trust them. Because obviously, again, you're you're um, opening up your vulnerabilities, um, and you know, in some ways creating risk. I'm not going to introduce someone or professionally say work with this person. They're fantastic because it has impact on your reputation and the trust that you have with the other individual. Well said, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you. That was very powerful. Um, you, you, you used a, um, a word that kind of, you know, has lots of different meaning risk, you know, the risk from that side, you know, uh, with that, with those types of interactions, uh, certainly, um, you know, reputation being what it is and reputation being what they are, there's certainly that element of um, initially, perhaps, maybe, yeah. but and, as time goes by, go ahead, Dawn, yeah. And then likewise, you know, if someone is introducing me and saying she can help with this, then I feel really put on the spot, right? I'm like, I can't, I really can't mess this up, you right. know, and, you know, you really want to put forth your your best efforts and kind of cement that relationship with the new individual because of the the person who had that trust and um, you know ability to believe in you. Well said, Dawn. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Rob, I see your hand. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Mike, a, a question, uh, and I'm just taking you know the information in and, and trying to think about how I might. Um, apply it, if you will. So am I on the right track if I'm thinking with no like and trust that one of the ways in which I could become more effective at networking is to be thinking about how can I uh, how can I help people get to know me better? So making myself sort of what do I have to do to make myself knowable, if that makes sense? Mm -hmm. How can I be, if you will, likable? And what can I do to make sure that I can demonstrate that I'm trustworthy? So I'm just you know, those are things that happen over time. You don't walk into a first time you meet somebody and they're immediately going to know, like, and trust you. But I'm wondering if you're, if the way you're approaching this um, idea is that if you can, as you're networking and you're just in general approaching the conversations you're having, if in the back of your mind you're saying, what can I do to make sure that I'm helping people get to know me better, that I'm not coming in as an idiot or a knucklehead and that I'm demonstrating trustworthiness. Is that kind of, are, am I on the right track in thinking that way? Yes, thanks. Thanks for the question, Rob. Um, there's a number of different elements, a number of different kind of potential paths we could take here. I'll just give you my, uh, my perspective is um, sincerity, a sincere mindset 
of wanting, not just doing this because you quote have to, or it's quote the right thing to do. Um, I've been proven wrong a couple times, well, more than a couple times, but I truly believe that people have good intentions. People have the best of intentions. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been disappointed a couple of times, and I'm sure I have disappointed people. That's, you know, that's not where I'm going with this. But I think the initial mindset, Rob, is to is is to be really coming at it from a place of sincerity, a place of just a, the servant mindset mm-hmm. that you're here, you're here to help other people in different ways, shapes, or forms. And when you say I want to help. Uh, that's another word in context. You know, we can go, we can spend the next, heck, we could spend the next five years coming up with fabulous definitions and examples. But I think it still starts with, in my, in my view, in my experience, it comes with um, a mindset of sincerity, of just wanting to know and recognizing the other individual. Initially, and this gets near the initial part of the conversation. Uh, they're not going to know that much about you unless you tell them. Mm-hmm. certain elements now maybe not your life story necessarily but again it's it's all about you know the question that we know this in our networking world how can i help you what can i do for you well you need to make it easy for that individual to kind of process what you could possibly do but if you're coming at it from a place of sincerity i believe that drives quite a bit does that does that is that helpful rap yep yep very much so thank you you're welcome you're welcome thank you Michael, just to add, can I add on that? Um, please, just please. To kind of, what, what speeds this up for me uh, makes me think of you know some people that if I'm at a networking event and I'm talking to them, that they make me feel like I'm the only person in the room. Like it's listening, mm-hmm. listening, really listening, not 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 scanning the room for who else they're going to talk to. They're right front and center. Well put. Thank you. That's that. And, no I, and I, I would add to that. Um, that's that's always very powerful. And you but you get a lot of people who focus on I need people to know me. And so even though they may be focused on you, they're focused on trying to tell you all sorts of stuff about them versus asking you a lot of questions. You know, I don't I don't care if that much if someone's really explored what I do early on. I want to, yeah, I want to have a conversation and I'll, I'll share more about what I do when they want to know more. If I push it on them, it, it just impairs the whole relationship. Thank you, John. Well said. Um, it's reciprocity, you know, the whole, the, 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 um, I guess it's been a while since I, since I, Use the Webster dictionary, but I think if you look up the word conversation somewhere in there, it's got to be mutual. It's got to be something back and forth, right, from that side. And I agree with you. I, um, I think we all have a number of common experiences here uh, this afternoon. I think on that list, you go to a meeting or something, and someone's just talking, 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 talking. Where my late mother always said, "When is when is when is he coming up for air?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and but that doesn't feel good. But again, it, it it's it, it's totally contrary to the hard, really, real keen point here of reciprocity, of having that sense of, you know, of how, you know, the 360 of this works. And when we continue, you know, efforting towards, you know, the trust element here, um, quite often, quite often that, you talk about a tangible or something we can point to uh, result here is um, an invitation. You know, what validates the trust element uh, more in some ways, more than an invitation. Yeah, you, know, you think about it, right? Think about you know home, you know family, friends, you know different events that you know you are part of that you're that you're invited to. Um, you know, holidays, vacation. Um, how about uh, if I invite you over to watch an Eagles game? Whether you're a fan of the Eagles or not, I'm going to extend an invitation because again, it's 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 it, it's a you know, it's a it's a step, you know, it's something that just validates the whole, the whole element of what, of what we've been talking about. And as it relates to employment and employers, um, geez, what a, a validation of the trust element by an employer offering you employment, offering you to come on board, come in, you're coming and join the club. I mean, that's just, that's just validation, 
right? That they've extended that type of uh, that type of there. So, like I say, talk about trust. That's the one thing that I like to I like to talk about. Okay. Um, this is just a just a just a visual 360 about how all these elements are starting to come together. It's kind of our compass. I love this quote here, where we're really really looking at elements of of trust. Okay, we're looking at advice, information and referral. It's our next it's our next north star with the elements of connectivity here. So when we look at when we talk when we're talking about advice, now let me be clear. This is both ways. This goes both ways. Getting advice and giving advice. When we talk about it centers around really asking questions mindfully with a purpose, okay? And as we come back to providing this type of information or asking for advice, there are elements of humility that absolutely are part of this successful mindset where it's, uh, my sense is we all have some folks we can think of that portray or you know give the um, give the impression that um, they're the smartest people in the room. Um, I know a few of those people. You kind of like you know you kind of like you know uh, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about someone in, in, in an approach that says you know just from a um, from an openness standpoint. Again, another element of vulnerability. Uh, really taking the um, really taking the uh, the approach that you don't have to be the smartest individual. You are here on a purpose. You're asking questions in a mindful, purposeful way, and you're best able to continue those types of relationships. I believe in approaching it with that mindset. Um, and again, you don't have to be you don't have to be this you know the, in this context. You do not have to be the smartest person in the room. Um, and when you're asking questions, I, you know, I, as we touched on, okay, asking, you know, very specific questions, mindful questions, ones that are, you know, you know, again, reciprocity from that side. Um, part of part of this real successful approach is always going to be taking the, you know, keeping in mind that the person you're speaking with. Again, I've been fooled, but I think most people want to help you. There's an element of want, okay, of a desire for someone to help you. And from my experience, you know, most people do want to help if they are able to. Your job in this role, in this, in this scenario, is to make it easy for them. Your job is to educate them in your own way, inform them in your own way. And quite, quite often, Quite often, this relates back to the most, really the most intense personal sales job, sales opportunity that you're going to have. By that, I mean, you are, it's incumbent upon you, okay, for advice, asking, for asking questions to inform person. The person who's in this role that you're that you're speaking with, um, again, they want to help, but you need to make it easy. So they'll learn the product. You're the product. So by asking those kinds of questions, having asking for advice, having that sense of humility, having that 360 opportunity, um, it really is. And again, just something that I can I can I can continue to encourage is help me if I'm if you're speaking with me, help me help you, so that you have the opportunity really to come back from that side and be a giver, you know, be a giver of advice when appropriate, you know, where, it, where, and I think we kind of know when those quite often when those opportunities present themselves. But again, that's another element of, you know, reputation and how people come together, uh, but give advice. And um, when you're giving advice, right, it's built upon the elements of trust that we spoke about before. So to have that element carry over and carry through into your, into your advice section. When we're looking at information, this is really where, you know, we know quite a bit of career job search is an information search initially. 
quite often. So it's really taking a look at um, just, again, being open to information, asking for information, giving information. And among the things that I've, that I've really learned firsthand is networkers, effective networkers, are givers first. They are givers first. Um, be that person, be the one that's really you know, front and center, offering assistance, offering whatever resources. Quite often it's our time, which we know is valuable, but being, having, you know, positioning yourself to have that, have that from that side. And as I mentioned before, it's all about give and take, but really having the approach of being a giver first, that is another element that will burnish your reputation develop a reputation of being someone who is not just a taker times you will take but really taking it from a side of what can i do what can i help where can i move this process forward having that opportunity but really to give and take information and quite often it's initially um fundamental the last thing here we're talking about referral and the way i see it you know referrals getting referrals, receiving referrals, taking advantage of referrals, they're really the dividend. They're really the dividend of executing no like and trust well. They're the dividend. There's they're, 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 they're elements where you've got the, um, using the information you've received, right? Utilizing, capitalizing on that. Um, it, you know, can the person among the things that, you know, can be part of this referral process, is something as simple as just, you know, um, can they point you in the right direction if you're interested in an industry, a company, you know, a company culture, all the things that are maybe not advertised on the website, so to speak. The, um, you know, to make an introduction, refer you to other resources, right, perhaps. And when we put that under, the, when you put that under this umbrella, any kind, any time you have those kinds of conversations where you can, it, get and receive and take and give resources. This is currency. From my experience, this is something that is absolutely value, has total value. So much so that, again, from a reciprocity standpoint, um, and, and again, I, I truly believe if you execute on know, like, and trust well, you've earned the right to ask. You have earned the right to ask for and I'm going to fill in the blanks, direction, resources, additional information, okay? Because it's founded upon that act, that process is founded upon laying those foundations of no like trust well and executing on that in a very mindful, very purposeful way, so much so that um, if you do in a very deliberate, very mindful way, I truly believe you've earned the right to ask. Quite a few of my clients, they just feel, oh, I don't want to put someone out. They're going to say no. There's a lot of, again, anxieties of fear that we know. And not having that comfort level, the initial comfort level, okay, is understandable. But again, if you're building on those, going back to those building blocks of no like and trust and executing on that well, I truly believe you, uh, you've earned the right to ask. And it is still a reciprocity, having the opportunity to give back. You may not have, you know, all the answers quite often and quite often we don't, but I think the opportunity to give back is very, very, you know, is very critical. And, and sorry to interrupt, but uh, Paul's got a, a question in chat. Thanks. That, yeah. that is essentially around a best practices question. And it says during a networking engagement, or if you're having multiple conversations with many people, the question is how can you retain and organize all of that? information provided, uh, all of that provided insight and knowledge. I struggle to remember and recall, especially two hours later, any best practices besides breaking out a notebook. So it's sort of like if you're talking <laughs> to multiple people and you've got names coming at you in a conversation, how do you capture it all? Any, any thoughts around that? Yeah, a yeah. Um, couple things that I have, um, a couple of things I'll tell you what haven't worked. I, I'm an optimist. I usually go with the positive. But one time I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go go in the other direction. Um, what I have what I have found to be really ineffective for me 
is uh, is just trying to either write it down, which is just sometimes just not possible, but connecting it back. I mean, why was I, you know, what was the purpose of the conversation? What to the best you can recall the purpose of the conversation? What I would also say, and this is where I get into my positive mode, and I would love to hear other 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 inputs on this as well, because we have a, a breadth of experience here, is if there is those one or two individuals that for different sets of reasons, sometimes it was just a really good conversation, right? You just like meeting people, you just kind of you have certain commonalities. And again, that cuts across any number of different things. I would absolutely, I would absolutely at the end of the at the end of the meeting, just jot something on, jot something and put if, if you have something to write it down with, put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. And what I do and what I've done is those one or two people, I'll actually go back. Okay, when I when I get home, you know, I take out my wallet, my keys, and I'll take out that paper. And what was it about that that made it memorable? It's it, sometimes it's just not possible because again, you get deluge. I understand that I've been in those meetings, uh, but quite often it's um, it's something that um, um, that I worked. I would also um, suggest if there's someone that you're really really interested in connecting with, okay, say it. Hey, geez, Rob. There's a lot of things going on here. I would like to reconnect with you. Maybe we get some coffee or let's, you know, let's, let's, let's reconnect at a later time. And perhaps that might be the opportunity just to exchange text, just exchange cell numbers. That way you at least have that connection. You're not pulling out the, I get the whole notebook and anything like that. And among the things that shows, I truly believe, among the things that shows is that you value the other individual. You want to take those next steps. We just can't do it now. Right. And we all live in a moment in a time where it's 24 seven, you know, everything is right happening. And sometimes that's just not possible. And what I've seen is I've just seen very little good come out of those forced kind of trying to remember everything. So but I would love to hear other other approaches to this, folks. I hope that was helpful, Paul. John did put in the chat about writing some notes on the business card. Um, and then I also have a friend who he will start a draft of an email, not put the address in because he doesn't want to accidentally hit send. And then in it, he'll just write, you know, hi, Michael. And then he'll write like a bullet point. Michael's really into hockey. We're like, you know, he'll write hockey, temple, you know, three things about the person. And that way he could go fill in the rest of the email later and it's saved in his drafts. Um, and I've seen him be pretty successful with that. And he's also always like, connecting with people on LinkedIn right then and there. So it kind of connects back. I, I, that To me, I'm like a little bit too, uh, it, it's a little difficult for me to, to do that, but for him, it works really well. So that's something I've exactly. heard, heard before. Thank you, Zoe. Yep. No, there's, there's any number of, uh, there's any number. Um, great question, Paul. Do business cards even, ex even exist? Um, the short answer is yeah. Uh, I would again. I'd like to hear other folks' opinions on this, insights on this. Um, in some ways, I do wish because you could write it back in the dark ages, like you know, five, ten years ago. I've got your card of something like you just said, Zoe. Something memorable, something that that's going to help me, going to jumpstart my recall for the conversation, right? Um, I would write it on the back, and what I would do when I got home, right? And my right in my right pocket was a bunch of business cards, right? In my left pocket were a bunch of other business, a smaller number of business cards. The ones in the I'm saying this out loud into a recorded device. The ones in the right pocket went in the trash because there just wasn't, you know, I didn't get that sense there was anything, you know, mem you know, not to diss anybody, because you try not to offend anybody, right? But the ones in the left, there was something about it. And I would have said something to the effect, Zoe, geez, great conversation. Thanks so much for sharing, you know, fill in the blanks. And that let, let's stay connected. And quite often that would be what I would do. Uh, but again, there's any number of ways. But uh, nowadays, you got to be a little more, uh, I guess, quicker on your feet. And I don't know about you guys. I have a heck of a time remembering names. Uh, just I just do. But that's something I'm, something I'm working on. But um, I guess the offset is I'm pretty good with faces. My my wife will tell you it's photographic. I don't know about that, but my recall for faces is pretty good. So um, I'd love to hear other, any other, any other experiences because this is a, that's a big one. 
Okay, so let's just continue here. And then again, just another screenshot of our of our of our of our map. And if you do this right, ladies and gentlemen, they become no like trust, advice, information, referrals become your networking North Stars. Practicing it mindfully, the approach, all the things that we've that all the things we've touched on, um, just really letting no like and trust uh, be your guide and, and giving advice, information, and referrals. Um, really um, giving it airtime, giving it airtime, AIR, giving it airtime uh, really will help develop that element. So I'd like to just, coming towards the end here, I'd like to give it just another brief quote here from uh, General Colin Powell. I love this quote. And let me give you an example. Well, before I do that, let me ask you all a question. How many times have you had to start over? How many times have you been knocked down? How many times have you had your job taken from you? I shared my story. We started out. That was the first of three times for me. Um, let me give you the best example of perpetual optimism. Say hello to my late father, Jim. Jim had no less than seven, Mike said seven, downsizings, displacements. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, I had a front row seat to what those events did, how they impacted, what effect it had on this man. I'll share something else. I never, ever, ever saw my father give up. I never saw him feel sorry for himself. You know, the why is me, oh me, why me, and so forth, right? What I did see was a man who got up, got dressed, went out, got, went out to look for work so that he could support his wife and his four kids. And um, by the way, when these events happened, there was no severance. There were no networking organizations, outplacement or coaching, um, something like groups we have, like Beacon, among others, my career transition to which I'm part of. They didn't exist. Um, what my father did, he employed the tools that I just described over the last hour in his own way, in his own shape, in his own form. And he did it. He did it in person. There was, there was no Zoom, right? <laughs> it doesn't exist. He did it the old-fashioned way, face-to-face. -face. So much so that this is just something I feel very strongly about. I understand the world we're in with post-COVID and Zoom and everything else. Um, if you're memorable, you're going to be marketable. In my opinion, you cannot be memorable over a Zoom camera. It just is just not the most effective long term. And I just truly think you're kidding yourself if you think you can be memorable over a camera. I, I'm just just my my two cents worth. And uh, from that side, he is uh, still uh, he passed a number of years ago. He's still the greatest. He's just the greatest. So I um, I thank you for the time. And I'll take some questions. I Michael, think you're muted, Rob. Yeah. Michael, what advice do you have? You know, a lot of times my clients will say, oh, I, I, there are people I want to call, but I haven't spoken to them in years. You know, I'm embarrassed. They know I'm looking for something. How do you help people get through that? Thanks for the question, Ken. What I advise, what I coach, and what I do. Um. I fall on the sword. It goes something like this. Ken, it's been a long time since we spoke last. That's on me. I'm so sorry that th this time has gone by. And then just engage, depending on the relationship, there are a couple of variables here, but depending on the relationship, um, again, most people want to help you. There's going to be the one in a hundred, right? We know that, but that's what I, that's what I, that's what I do, Ken. And, and again, that gets back to, 
again, the vulner the sense of vulnerability, which is at an increased level, I you know, I believe initially because hey, gosh, I haven't spoken to Ken in 12 years, whatever it is. That's what I that's what I coach. And just take the high road. Just say, look, it's on me. Right. Remember, you're just doing your best to take whatever next steps you can. Thank you. Good this is Paul. One of the, and I've been in that situation. I've black, I haven't had to look for an opportunity in over 15 years. I let some of my network, uh, I didn't, I didn't nurture it. Let's just leave it at that. And um, I've made some of those outreaches. And one thing that's worked well is saying, uh, you know, I know it's been a long time. I hope you are well. I have some good things in the works um, that I'm excited about, but I also know that you have other opportunities you're exposed to. Uh, you know, I'd appreciate it if something comes your way that, you know, you think of me. That way, there wasn't this weighty burden that I'm looking for them to save the day. It was that, you know, I'm, I'm going, there's momentum behind me, but, you know, if I pop up on your radar or now that you have an awareness of that, you know, if I can be of service or benefit, reach out. And I, I feel like that disarmed the conversation in a way that it, when I didn't use that verbiage, uh, it, it didn't work as well. Thank you, Paul. Um, in addition to what you what you shared, um, quite often it's just you remember we're having a conversation. You're just continuing a conversation, a conversation that perhaps you know paused <laughs> five years ago, seven years, whatever this is. But at one point, you know, there was more frequent kind. And look, there's lots of reasons why this happened. I'm not here to make excuses for myself or anyone else. And that's not where we're going with this. Uh, I would still. Uh, come back and say, I, and, I, and, and John, I thank you, John Halley, your, your, your point is spot on 90% of the time, you know, I, I personally think it's higher than that, but that's okay. I'm, I'm good with that. People want to hear from you. They're happy. They're just refreshed because again, this is similar to folks that are in job search. If it hasn't happened to them, there's somebody that has, well, who hasn't lost touch with folks for lots of different reasons, right? You go, I still have my high school yearbook i mean right i think that's just just something in that and there's some folks that you can just go back to but again paul i i understand the the initial i i don't know if anxiety is the right word but the initial hesitation to do that but again i think the phrasing it you're not you're not just you know coming at them you know um begging then you know you don't want you you're not that person number one number two you want to make sure that there's that that level of just you know, for lack of a better term, awareness that there's a big world out there. And if people can help you, most people do. That's in my experience. But I but I understand what you're saying. I totally understand it. Mike, uh, uh, Baron had a question in chat and, and John has some responses to it. But Baron's question was, any advice on maintaining a new network after landing? Yes, a couple. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, what I what I've done, what I continue to do, is every three months, give or take, I'll just send out just a just a, what I call a how do you do note, right? I landed, you know, how's it going? And quite often, I start with the folks that, and, and I, I think those of us that have been through career transition, and whether you have you have you know, there's people that are close to you, people that you they're your beyond first level connections, right? They're uh, yeah, my mother was Italian. It's La Familia. The ones that you really, really bond with. Okay. They're the ones that you're going to go in the you go into battle with. Okay. Uh, and then there's other folks that maybe not quite that that traumatic, but you get the point. Um, I keep them in mind. Just just say, hey, you know, thanks again. And just let me know just from the side, this is how things are going with me. And I always end, I always end that note with a simple, a simple statement. Please let me know what I can do to help you. That's a that's a, a reverb, a constant you know mantra that I um I try to I try to live my life by. So just having that, you know, initial, you know, but then I say every three months or so, just keeping it fresh. And and remember, it goes both ways because you know there's people that have lost touch that I that people that when I landed uh, uh, full time at Temple uh, in 2018. Um, I didn't sit here and make a list or keep a list, but there are some folks that I haven't heard from yet. And that's okay. 
again, that's, you know, that's okay. But there were folks that I was at one time very close with that I maintained friendships and relationships with. And look, that's life, guys. You know, but the ones that have that, that core, the ones that are really like this, and there's ones that are maybe one step removed from that. Those are the ones that I'm going to keep because they're the ones that are, you know, if, if something should happen again, quite often you kind of have that. It's not quite plug and play, but you're not coming at it from a cold start. It's all about relationships, guys. It's all about my experience. Are there other questions for, uh, <clears throat> for Mike uh, from the group? I have one, Mike. Um, and this is Bill. Yeah, Bill. Uh, what do you what do you do with those folks that are complacent in their careers and not doing networking, but are in a situation that may, you know, that their job might be a little rocky? Uh, you know, what do you what do you do to advise them, encourage them, coach them to get back out there? So let me sure I understand the question. These are folks that are still employed, but they're, they're still employed. They're still employed. Mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're, they're in between retirement and maybe just five years, five to 10 years, you know, out, out of retirement. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I got many of clients that are kind of grappling with this, but, you know, when I ask them, what are they doing to get back out there? I, you know, they kind of give me some soft answers. Like, yeah, you know, I, I have coffee here and there. I understand. So, so it's like, what, what do you do to, to try to get them to the next level? Like, you know, you need to be starting to re-engage. Great question. Thank you. Um, what I do is I will revert back to, you know, in a very succinct way, my personal experience. And what I share is it's, it's not, it's not like having some awful disease which unfortunately exists in our world, number one. My point is what I will say to my clients and anyone that, that I'm working with, there's a part of that experience that never leaves you. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, when it happens to you, it's worse. As opposed to taking certain, in your own way, certain proactive steps. And quite often, Bill, these are not, at least in my experience, and I'd love to hear your experience. So these are not like moving mountains. We're not saying you're going, you know, changing industries, changing careers, you know, say moving mountains, so to speak. Just proactive in your own way. And depending on what kind of conversation results on that, and if it's not quite what I think should be kind of happening in its own way, um, I'll ask the, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, uh, the doomsday question. Hey, what would you do if you walked in today at 830 and by 10 o'clock you were out of a job? What would you do? What was your first step? You got a husband, you got a wife, you got kids. Now, fortunately, my daughter was, she's 25 now. When the first time it happened, she wasn't old enough. She remembers the last time. Oh, yeah. So from that side, that's what, that's what I try to do. And, and again, it's, and as we know, it's human behavior. It, it's not the military. You can't force them to do this. Um, it's not that. But I try to draw a scenario in their minds just to say, hey, these are things that I'm recommending as your coach, right? I'm recommending this. Uh, I revert back to the experiences where it makes sense, not to beat the, you know, beat, beat the dead horse, but just to relay it back that those are things that I didn't see it coming. Yeah, shame on me. I know that now. So learn from that experience, again, for what it's worth. Is that helpful? Very helpful. Thank you. All right. Well, I know a couple of folks have had to jump off and we're starting to run up towards the uh, the bottom of the hour. Oh, geez. Like, wow. Can't, okay. Can't thank you enough for the time today. I, I just, I was jotting some notes down through the presentation and sort of if, at the risk of oversimplifying it, but summarizing some of what I was hearing yeah. Uh, this is what stood out to me. The idea of, first of all, being vulnerable and being willing to be uncomfortable and sort of getting over that initial hurdle. And you know, we talked a bit about the fact that you'll learn that you're not the only one going through and experiencing something. So that whole sort of embracing that uncomfortableness and being vulnerable, um, listening and reciprocity are just key features to the networking uh, through your uh, no like trust uh, the whole idea that um, 
trusting is part of being that reciprocity is part of the trust and being able to give and receive. And that, that led to another point, which was the idea of you talked about um, giving first, which I think is a great mantra when you think about the networking that, and it's a great way of developing or showing your trustworthy as you're willing to sort of extend, what can I do for you? How can I help what you need? So that giving first really stood out to me. And then the last thing I jotted down was just, it sounds really basic, but people often forget to do it is ask for referrals. You know, the referral part of your AIR. Um, and there, a lot of folks will walk away saying, great conversation, but what did I get out of it? And I forgot to ask for the referral. So so those things stood out from my perspective. And I just thought it was a really uh, great conversation, uh, well presented. So thank you for that. And just uh, I think people are walking away with some nice nuggets today. Thank you very much. I, I thank you very much. I, I'm so appreciative. Um, I, um, yeah, and I'll, I, I meant to say this right before we went in the site. Is there anything I can do for anyone? I'm an email away. Beacon is the premier executive networking organization serving the Mid-Atlantic region. To learn more, go to beaconforlife.org.